at the meeting last week for RTB. If you are a, what did you call it, a shop chairman, uh, meet after the service uh, today. Is that right? After the service today? Where are you? <laughs> Whoa, way back there. Okay. I'm looking for you up here front. You know, like the good Baptists. <laughs> I know, true Baptists are on the back. Hey, we're in this series on the Beatitudes, and, and I've, I'm thankful for the response that I've had. I appreciate your, your texts, your calls, and, and such about this, but um, they're found in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, and uh, the, the word Beatitude, uh, the, these Beatitudes start with the word blessed, blessed. Over and over, Jesus said blessed, and it's a word that means happy. Jesus wants you happy, dear Christian. He wants you happy in your life. Everything about your life should be happy. Is everything going to be good? No. But all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And that's what we need to have in our heart to make us happy, that God is working a plan in your life. I'm going to invite you to stand with me, and we're going to read again in unison, chapter 5 of Matthew, verses... 3 through 12, chapter 5, beginning at verse 3. Let's read together. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. What we find in the Beatitudes are nine attitudes that a faithful follower needs to display. Today we're going to focus on verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, everything I've read, uh, getting ready for this mo message, focuses on the persecution. And we'll, we'll talk about that, but what I want to make sure that we all understand today is what the persecution is for. We are persecuted, Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. If you are doing what is right, if you are doing what is according to the word of God, as opposed to all the evil, as opposed to what the world uh, seems to want, you will be labeled a troublemaker. You will be labeled an agitator. There is something wrong in our world where they're calling evil good and good evil. And if you stand against that thought and you want to call good good and you want to call evil evil, you will be persecuted. You will be troubled in that time. And listen, I, I've lived long enough now to know that uh, in this world, if you do something, you're going to get criticized. If you do nothing, you're going to get criticized. Here's my thought about that. I'd rather be criticized for doing something right than not doing anything at all. Or I'd rather be criticized for doing what is right as opposed to doing something that is wrong. Um, I'd rather be called a fool because I follow God rather than to fall in line with this world. There is... No one who follows God who is a fool. But if you do, you're going to be criticized. There is a character trait in this verse, not talked about, but because of this verse, that we need as a Christian. And if you have this 
um, character trait, uh, it's going to be because you are going to be criticized for how you live your life as a born-again believer. As you follow the Word of God, as you do as the Holy Spirit commands you to do, we must have an attitude of endurance. Endurance, what the Bible calls long-suffering. Um, some other translations will say patience. We have to have patience with the people of this world. God lists this attitude of long-suffering in the fruit of the Spirit. You know, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, he says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. This is what comes out of your life as you are living your, your born-again uh, Christian life. Long-suffering, it means just that. It means that you suffer long. In other words, you will be criticized, and you'll be criticized over and over and over again. People will harass you. People will, will talk bad about you because you're trying to live your life right. So this is an important attitude, a quality that you need to have as a part of your life. It's important to have this attitude in times of persecution, in times of harassment. It, it would be wise for you right now to beginning today to start setting it in your head getting it in your heart that persecution harassment is going to come if you live the Christian life you need to learn how to deal with those people who talk against you so that they don't rob you of your joy as a Christian if you're serious about following Christ you will be criticized if you're a faithful follower of the Lord you will be persecuted harassed if you practice what the bible teaches us you will be ostracized in many cases it will come how you handle the harassment is what really matters you've heard it heard me say it before and i'll say it again i think it's uh, on my facebook page today god is more concerned with your character than he is with your comfort what that means is that God, we have a lot of things that come into our life, and God wants to know, how are you going to handle that? What are you going to do with that? When you're put down, when you're laughed at, when, when somebody, you know, especially teenagers, you go to school, and, and you are professing Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, and, and people laugh at you, what, what are you going to do with that? You're going to be uncomfortable, for sure, but God can build character if you will learn this character trait of long-suffering, of patience. God is more concerned with your character than he is with your comfort. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. This is how we are to um, live our life out in this world. He says, um, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all, listen, humility, gentleness, here's the word, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of love. If you are a born-again Christian, God wants you to live your life worthy of that title. How do we do that when they come against you? When they bombard you, you need to do it with humility, with gentleness, with patience, bearing with them. Jesus, in, in this text, he's not pondering whether or not you're going to be persecuted if you live for him. He, he doesn't consider whether or not you'll be criticized. He, he's not hassling over the fact that you will be harassed. He knows that you will. He says we must endure under pressure we have to endure under the persecution endure and hold tight when you're harassed jesus said in matthew 5 10 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for living your life right according to his word when sticks and stones are thrown at you you need to stick it out just hold on endure have that attitude of endurance so today i'm going to give you four very quick steps for how to handle uh, harassment they're in your bulletin today 
so that you can take them home and have them. The first one is recognize the source. And this is so important about everything in the Christian life. Recognize the source. Where is it coming from? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Beloved, this verse tells us we have an enemy. And that enemy is not sitting next to you today. He's not on the other side of the church. He's not at work waiting for you to get there tomorrow. Your enemy is Satan. These are demonic presences that are talked about in that verse. And the devil does not want God to win. He's the enemy of God. He's our enemy. And he's going to use any tactic. He's going to use every mean to attack God. If your enemy can't get to you, he's going to attack your children. He's going to attack your family. He's going to attack your friends. He'll, he'll attack anything that you care about because he knows if he can't hurt you, he'll hurt those that you love and thus hurt you. So the devil, Satan, he can't get to God. So what is he going to do? He's going to harass God's children. He's going to make your life miserable. In Revelation 12, 10, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He is at war with God, and he can't harass God. So what does he do? He attacks God's children. And when we are under attack, we have to recognize the source. It's not flesh and blood. It's not the people around you. It's not your boss. It's not your coworker that you're struggling with. The real enemy is Satan, and all, is he want, is all he wants to do is to get you upset enough to lose your temper, to lose it in front of other people, and to ruin your testimony. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get you off of the will of God. This is why we need patient endurance when we are attacked, when we are persecuted, when we are joked about, when we're harassed. So first thing, recognize the source. Here's step two, refuse to retaliate. This is so hard. Somebody says something to you, you just want to be right back at their face. But let's take what the word of God says. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 19. He says, repay no one evil for evil. Don't retaliate. But give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Do people say hurtful things about you? You know, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member. I mean, you're, you're trying to do something good, and all you hear from that one person is negative. Negative, negative. You're not doing that right. You're not holding that right. You're not, you know, you, you can never do enough to please that person. Well, did you know that in the Bible it, it records that Jesus was accused of being a drunk? Can you imagine? He, he was accused of being a glutton. It, it's there. You know why? Because he was trying to do what was right. He was trying to do the will of God. All his life, and he is being accused of, of being a drunk and being a glutton, many other things. But what did Jesus do? He refused to retaliate. Yeah, listen, he was God. He could have pointed out every sin they'd ever committed right there. Just start listing them. Humiliate them in front of everybody, but he didn't. He left that up to God. You know what that's called? That's called trust. That's called having faith. Putting that faith in God. It's called having patient endurance. He put his trust in God. He had faith that his father would take care of the situation. And beloved, when you are persecuted, when you are harassed, when you are laughed at for being a Christian, for doing what is right, when people treat you mean because of, of your Christianity, you need to believe 
that God is big enough to take care of it someday. Leave it alone. Walk away from it. And I'll tell you something else. When you refuse to retaliate, it just, it just upsets that other person because that's what they want to do. They want you to react. They want you to get angry. But you need to take the word of God. You need to, to see God is your shield. He's protecting you. That's why that verse that we read here in Romans says to leave room for God's wrath. He's big enough. And we need to trust him. We need to have enough faith in God that, that we say, I'm not going to repay. I'm just going to leave you in God's hands. I'll let him take care of it. I just need to trust God. We need to trust him. Put our trust, our faith, our hope in, in God so that whatever comes our way, and, and it will come, but whatever it is, we can know that he can handle it. So we have to refuse to retaliate. Leave it up to God. The third step for handling harassment is respond positively. Now, we just read from Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 19. Just drop down to verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not overcome, be, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. When evil attacks us, we are to respond with good. Now, it's not normal for us to return good when someone is attacking us. It's not normal for us to bless a person who is cursing you. It's just not normal, but that's what the Bible tells us to do. That's what Jesus told us to do. Return good for evil. And let me just say this, if you're always trying to get even, you will never get ahead. You get that? If you're always trying to get even, you will never get ahead. When someone starts teasing you, when they start taunting you, and you retaliate, who's in control? They are. They are. They're pushing your buttons. They're, they're getting to you. And, and when you respond in a negative way, you become their puppet. Because they know now they can control you. They could be looking for a fight. And you just played right into their hand. How many times have you said to someone, you know, you make me mad. Listen to yourself. Listen to what they're saying. You make me mad. You're telling that person, you have complete control over me. You're making me this way. You're toying with my emotions. Don't let them do it. Here's what Jesus tells us to do. Love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Is it easy? No. Wow. Is it unusual? It sure is. It, it, but it's what God wants us to do. It's what he tells us to do. That's what God expects us to do. Don't react. Respond. Don't react to the criticism. Respond in love. When the person puts you down, build them up. Say something encouraging. When they hassle you, be nice to them. In life, they're... There are many things that you cannot control. You can't control how someone is going to respond to you. But you can learn to respond with something good. It ought to be a part of your, your love language that says to respond God's way. And God will smile upon you. God will bless you in a great way. Here's the last step, rest in God's protection. Now, I'm going to read a psalm, Psalm 37, just verses 7, 8, and 9. But um, I, I, what's going to get you is who wrote this. Here's the psalm. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger 
and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. I like that part. For the evildoer shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Now here's the interesting part. This is written by David early in his life. This is written by David when he was, uh, King Saul was on the throne. Now David was the anointed king, but he wasn't going to touch God's anointed. Saul was on the throne. David was going to leave it at that. But um, you know the story of David, right? How Saul persecuted, harassed him. There was, there was this thing between Saul and David. And it began the day that David came into the camp and he heard that giant railing on the, the armies of God and, and David took it upon himself to go and kill that giant. Boy, when he did that, the people started singing praises of David. I mean, actual songs were being written about David. Everyone was singing except for Saul. Saul. He got jealous. Saul got envious. He started getting evil thoughts entering into his mind against David. All he wanted to do was hurt David, kill David, do something mean to David. David started looking like an enemy to Saul. And as time passed, envy and jealousy grew in Saul. In fact, it came to the point that he tried to kill David. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 11, he tried to pin him to the wall with a spear. David had to run. David had to hide. He's out in the caves of Abdelon, and, and he's hiding from Saul, his father-in-law. You talk about harassment, persecution. David knew persecution. He knew about harassment. Yet, yeah, But what does he say? He says, be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Don't fret about what those other people are saying. Don't fret about what other people can do. Even if you get fired, God's got something better for you. He's just moving you on. So let me ask you today, in the last few minutes that we have, where are you? Are you being persecuted, harassed? People just don't like you because of your faith in Christ? I mean, it, it's really starting to weigh on you. I want you to know something. God sees it, and he cares about you. He's concerned about how you're handling the harassment. Again, God is more concerned about your character than he is your comfort. You see, God's in the character-building business. He wants you to learn from this harassment, and he wants you to be successful. He wants you to be an overcomer. He wants you to overcome the evil with good. How are you dealing with harassment? Just because you're doing something right, you're doing something good, people are coming against you. Like I said, you can do anything and people can say bad things about you. You can do nothing and people can say bad things about you. When harassed, where do you run to? What are your resources? Do you know who, the, who is the one who is bringing the harassment? It's not that person. Remember, it's the enemy that we have. Do you refuse to retaliate or do you get right back into their face and you stand up for yourself and do all those things that the world tells us to do? Or are you going to do what the word of God tells you to do and refuse to retaliate? Do you respond in a positive way? Do you try to, to overcome evil with good? Do you rest in the Lord? Have faith in his protection. Well, beloved, if you do, God has a blessing for you. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You may be here today and you don't know Jesus as your savior. I I want you to know he does care for you too. He He cares very much for you. God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son. We sang about that today. That's from John three sixteen. He loves you so much, he sent his son. His son came and lived a perfect life, lived through the persecution, the resentment, the harassment, and he gave his life. He laid down his life on the cross for you. And he wants you to know how much he loves you. 
On the third day after they killed him, he was crucified. He was raised from the dead. He lived upon the earth. Many people saw him. Then he ascended to heaven. And he's right now today at the right hand of God the Father interceding for you. He's praying for you. If you're here and you do not know him as your Savior, he's praying for you right now. God is drawing you. He brought you here to this service so that you could hear the gospel. And if, all, if you just call out to him today, ask him to be your Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. Admit that you are a sinner and tell him that you need him to be your Savior. He'll come into your life and he'll change you. He'll make you his child. He'll give you a home in heaven forever. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Savior, we want to introduce you to him. Would you just call upon him now in prayer? Say this to him if you want to be saved. Say this. Say, just say, dear Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my life. And I trust you, Jesus, to take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, for those that have heard this message today, as a Christian, help them in their endurance, being patient. Help us to overcome the evil of this world with good. Help us to be a difference where we work, where we live. Help us to bring joy to those that have no joy in their life minister to these your people and, and lord god for those who have made that prayer today i pray that you would give them the, the strength to stand up this morning and present themselves to this church as a public profession of their faith and we'll give you all the praise and the honor and the glory in jesus name amen we're going to have a hymn of invitation if you prayed that prayer we want to know we want to celebrate with you and rejoice with you so as we stand together and as we sing, you come on this first stanza. Take my hand, I'll be here at the front. Let's sing.